Elon Musk's back. So oh, his no. team. I know, slow news day, but we got Elon. So his team sent a second letter calling off the $44 billion acquisition of Twitter. The letter again claims that the information provided by the social media platform was false and misleading and cites Twitter whistleblower Peter Zatko. So he's Twitter's former chief security officer. He claims that he uncovered extreme egregious deficiencies by Twitter in every area of his mandate. Now, a Twitter spokesperson uh, countered what he said and said that Zacco was fired for ineffective leadership and poor performance. And this is all happening while a Delaware judge called Elon Musk's request for data about Twitter spam and fake accounts absurdly broad, but still ordered Twitter to provide a smaller subset of the information. So a lot going on here. This has kind of been unfolding ever since the whistleblower came out a few weeks ago. Uh, Will, what do you think of this second letter, do you think it is going to be effective? I don't know. I kind of tuned out this story like in July because it just kept dragging <laughs> on. I don't know if everyone else feels that way too, right? Like just put it to bed one way or the other. Purchase it or don't purchase it. I don't care at this point. Make a decision. I guess if you get into the weeds here, it is a little bit interesting. Like the Zacco guy looks, looks pretty professional, right? But why did he get fired? I'm not quite sure. It seems like Probably shouldn't go out and whistleblow in your company. Not a great move. But his background's pretty legitimate, right? DARPA, Alphabet, others. He's probably like a, uh, back in the 90s, he was a big hacker. And so I think a lot of people wanted to use his talents. Jack Dorsey hired him there. And then he turns around whistleblows on Twitter. And now Elon Musk is using him. What a weird world it would be to be like in the center of all these billionaires and be sort of a pawn for them. That's kind of an, an odd instance here. If Elon buys it, that would be a big deal, right? Because stock market has really been down for quite a while. Don't think Twitter is quite worth what it used to be worth back in the spring, just because we've just seen a tumbling prices for all tech stocks. Twitter's adamant on seeing this go through, which is quite a reversal from the spring, right? Where we first saw some hesitancy from Twitter, a lot of hesitancy from people inside Twitter who were against Elon Musk buying it. And now they are moving forward with it. I guess you probably owe something to your investors if you have a huge offer on the table and there's some clauses making sure it closes. Zach, what do you think? I don't know. I'm with you. I tuned this one out a while ago. This happened back in <laughs> April when everyone was captivated. They're like, oh, my Elon's going to buy Twitter. Oh, my God. And then the Doge went pumping for no reason whatsoever. It was, yeah, those were the days. But this, this seems like in the weeds of legal proceedings. And I guess, hey, he said it twice. He doesn't want to do this thing anymore. So... Just listen to him and let him walk away and <laughs> settle it in court and pay the money for messing everything up and let's be done with this thing. Jen, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I kind of just want people to listen to Elon and let him walk away too. I, in the intro, I mentioned you know the judge saying that his his request for information is kind of absurd. And I think the quote is, is funny, so I'm going to read it. The judge said, trillions upon trillions of data points for more than 200 million users it was overly burdensome and no one in their right mind has ever tried to undertake such an effort. And that's kind of what I think the general public has been saying about this. Like, why is Elon so focused on finding out if that percentage that Twitter claimed, I think it was 5%, um, is true. I don't know, Zach, do you have something to add there? No, I mean, I just, I think it is worth <laughs> sort of remembering the, the the bigger picture here, right? The fascination, I guess, for a Coindesk audience is will Elon decentralize Twitter into some sort of public good protocol, which has been sort of a vision that's been espoused by Jack Dorsey for a number of years now. Uh, Jack Dorsey recently said his greatest regret was turning Twitter into a company. So it's interesting to speculate about what this future might be, but also the time is right. And we've seen a lot of decentralized social media firms pop up, right? And I think it's now the time for them to sort of seize this and be like, hey, mm -hmm. let's see if we can get the party over here, whether it's Lens Protocol from Aave, whether it's Deso.com, which we heard a lot of noise about over the past eight to 10 months. Now is the time, I think, for some of these upstarts, these Web3 upstarts to say, okay, you know, here's some problems that uh, are being brought to light. We have a potential solution and it's decentralized social media and it can be better for X, Y, Z. I don't think we're seeing a lot of noise around that because there's not a ton of conversation about the legal proceedings here in this case. But I think now is the time. No better time than the present. Get to it, decentralized social media people.